Welcome back to Ravenwool Farmstead. Here at the farm, we dream big, and often bite off more than we can chew. So we ordered over 70 fruit trees and berry bushes in the hopes of creating a permaculture orchard that will feed our family for the years to come. But there's a small problem. They're arriving this week, and we're not even close to having the orchard area prepared. After almost three years of research into permaculture, hardiness zones, and watching countless hours of Stefan Sokoviak on YouTube, we were finally ready to start designing our own orchard. We'll show the three crucial design tips that we implemented in starting our food forest. So today's objective was to measure out where some of our orchard trees are going. We basically have a swale already here. Two swales here, one going down there with the rock wall. And then you can kind of see the land change here. It's like a little bit of a divot. And then these trees will be planted on the berm. So we've got our little pathway going up, marked by that first flag. And then we're gonna put our pawpaw tree here. And that'll give it a 10 foot span. And then allowing for the span of the tree, this one's going to be a peach. This one will be some kind of a nitrogen fixer tree. And then over here, it's like about 20 feet between the trees, 15 to 20 feet. That will be our first pear tree. So our top tip number one was planting in trios. This means you plant two fruit trees and then a nitrogen fixing tree to improve your soil. And it also feeds the fruit trees. In our case, we're using ship mast black locust trees that we got from seed. We had to drive two hours away to get those, but we're very happy to have them. And sea buckthorn and goji berry were the other nitrogen fixing shrubs that we used. All these little apple buds. That's so exciting. Can't wait to have the apples off of it. They were really good apples last year. All the strawberries came back that we planted from last year in the fall and they all have new growth. Right there. Even this little one. <laughs> On our left. My left and right. A lot of this was still from like when we moved. So it's been sitting out here over winter. It's fully saturated, uh, but it's great for when you plant your orchard. So we are getting orchard trees not next week now. I've bumped it back to the week after. And we'll be using these to put along the bottom of the orchard trees to kind of do like a weed barrier. Well, good morning. Today is the day we're planting our trees. We got all of our trees from tree time, all of our orchard trees, and we got a whole bunch of bulk trees. We got pawpaws and peaches, pear, pecan, black raspberry, I think, or a whole bunch. I don't even know. And they came in the mail yesterday, so we've got three days to plant them. And of course, our spot isn't completely prepared yet. We're still clearing over there for them to go in because we don't want to take the trees down after they get in. <laughs> and if anyone likes numbers and likes to know how much things cost, we're going to put at the end of the video here uh, our exact receipts for how much starting this orchard cost us. It was actually less than we were expecting, but still a fair amount of money. We decided to do a little bit of a drainage test. So I put some water in the hole. I'm gonna see how long it takes for it to drain. Within, what, like 35 minutes or so, that was all drained. So we've got really good draining soil. So Rob's cleared all in here for the orchard trees. And I'm gonna clear a little bit more on this side with the uh, clippers.
jumping. Good boy. It's a good look for you, hon. Thanks. <laughs> so last time I was talking about just clearing this area with the brush. My chain was no good and they were sold out at the local hardware store, but Caitlin got one from the city for me. And so that way I was able to go all out on the trees that were here, got them all down. We still need to clear, like buck them up so that we have a place to plant the orchard trees that are sitting in my closet right now. As you can see the path goes along here and then it curves that direction. So everything within a 25 foot radius has been cut down until I, I buck up the trees and I clear them out. Otherwise it's a tripping hazard and you don't want to be tripping when your chain's on. That is the progress so far. Next it'll be clearing it so we can actually start planting on this side anyway. But we're going to have to shift our focus to this side because we got about 25 feet that we got to go that way now too. And we got stuff along the road that we got to do for the... Uh, for the willows that we have. Mm -hmm. So lots of clearing to do. And we gotta just give her and, and get her done. Nothing like lighting a fire under your arc to get things done, eh? Oh, because the trees arrived and we're like, oh, we're not yeah. done. Like, oh, they're here and I'm not ready. They need to go in the ground. It's like every single, every single homesteading channel we've watched, whether that be like, sow the land, holler homestead, um, even Justin Rhodes and stuff, they've all said like, I wish I would have planted this like years ago. Mm -hmm. They say the the best time to plant a tree is... Last year. Well, yeah. Years or ago. 20 years yeah. ago. <laughs> so this is our first year owning the property. We're going to get them planted and sorted out ASAP. This is that full dump truck load of compost that we got. They use peat moss and basically lobster shells discarded lobster shells makes really good compost that? the, bugs away. the bugs <laughs> <laughs> the bugs are so bad we're gonna plant these peonies that i bought and it says on the back not to move them once they're planted they don't like transplanting apparently so we're picking a spot and we're going to leave them there. Running into some issues with where we want to plant the peonies. This is the driveway. And that's where we want to have our little market set up is over there. So people can drive in the driveway and over and around to the market. So the peonies will be right here along with a bunch of other like raspberries, cut flowers, a couple cherry trees over there. And oh, the bugs are really bad. Mosquitoes. It's mosquito and black fly season. So this will be the peony bed for now. I pulled out all these rocks out of here. Like I just can't even dig. It's just pure rock. There's some good native soil here but in amongst all the rocks. Oh, it might take them a little while. Walking around in these funny masks, trying to scare the locals. What you got there? I have more golden willow shoots. Planting them along the road front so that as you're driving up towards the property, you see uh, willow trees. Just lining, Just lining all... along the road. Whole road. I'm calling this flush. The second strategy we used in designing our orchard was to plant in layers. There are seven layers total, but we chose to just start with three. The ones we focused on was canopy, the trees themselves, shrubs, berry-bearing shrubs, and small perennials. 
The shrubs we decided to go forward with were elderberry, goji berry, sea buckthorn, and cranberry. And the small perennials included rhubarb, comfrey, lingonberry, yarrow, and walking onions. Our main criteria for selecting these varieties was our hardiness zone. We're in a zone 5B to a 6 in Canada, so we do get very cold in the winter. We have to be able to survive some pretty harsh weather. So, what we got going on here? Uh, well, we've got one pawpaw in the ground already. Mm -hmm. And a pawpaw we are super excited about. We've never tried one. But we hear it um, tastes like a cross between a mango and a banana. The mango is your favorite fruit. Yeah. And the banana is my favorite fruit. So, and it's a custard fruit. So you're supposed to be able to eat it with a spoon. Sounds really good. And then I've got three Siberian peach, Ooh. which should grow well in our climate because it's made for like hardy zone five or something. Si zone four, I don't know. Lingonberry. Lingonberry. I recognize those. It's basically low bush cranberry. Very sweet. And then this one is, what does it say on it? Indian sea buckthorn. Sea buckthorn. Is this the one that doesn't have thorns? Um. We got. Doesn't look like it has thorns. I thought we got one that didn't have thorns. Might be this one. Maybe it is. Um, even though it's called sea buckthorn, I thought the other one was called something else. Sea. Sea berry. Sea berry. I don't know. The last one there. Oh, we already looked at them all. Okay. Yeah. Right on. For now, this is like round one. And we've got. What is that in the ground? That's the papa. That's the papa in the ground, and ready to go. This guy right there. That's cool. I'm really excited about the pawpaw. Huh. You, you ask a lot of people, they're like, what the heck's a pawpaw? And then I'm like, have you ever watched Jungle Book? Huh? You know, when Baloo the Bear sing that song where he's like, when you pick the pawpaw, oh. or the prickly pear, yeah. you pick with the wrong pawpaw. Well, next time, beware. <laughs> <laughs> so the other things we were up to today, and that was it a hot day. It was really hot, but it was beautiful. I mean, perfect day for us to be out here working on our tan and uh, working on the property as well so the other day i was showing you the bush that i had to chew into and my chain was broken but caitlin was able to pick one up in town and this is the results of today so this is what the orchard space looks like before and after a couple days of hard work this is the after so we can see the garden edge is actually a little bit too far that way at that flag is the new spot where it comes out to and that'll be 84 feet and then 10 feet out from there and 10 feet this way so we're ah, right there i'm standing almost on it that is going to be a pussy willow followed by another pussy willow followed by a third pussy willow so we're gonna have a lot of pussy willows here so that may seem a little random, but this is going to be our cut flower perennial garden. And pussy willows make such a nice addition to bouquets, crafting for making wreaths and other things that I just really want to experiment with and have lots of stems and buds available to me. And then another six feet over, that's actually going to be the edge of the road. And with the dronage footage, I just took uh, of where the dronage? The dronage. <laughs> the dronage <laughs> footage. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a lot of sun today. Um, that's going to be the chicken coop over there. It's going to be about a 12 by 40-ish. Um, that's where we're going to be running a lot of compost through them. So they're going to come in from this side and end on the other side. And there's actually going to be a, a main drive by over there with gravel at some point. So here we've got the road. goes over eight feet. And then we're going to start the other orchard trees on the other side. I know it's really sad getting rid of a lot of these trees. There were some really nice um, maples that were coming up that we wanted to save, but 
there's 50 acres of maples and all sorts of different trees here for us to and none uh, of this save is gonna and move. Go to waste. Because we're using it for the garden beds. Yes. And all the little like four inch and smaller is going to be wood chips for the garden. And we don't want to waste anything. No, we want to, whatever we're taking from the land, we want to be able to use to its fullest potential. Not to mention this forest. Um, we've done a lot of hikes through it, uh, through all the seasons now. Like we've been on this property for almost a year now. And there's not a lot of life back here. Uh, there's a few birds, very few birds, but it is like dead quiet. Mostly just ravens, a couple of porcupines, but you can see we are surrounded by thousands of acres of trees. So there's no shortage of trees around here. And what we're turning this land into is actually going to be incredibly diverse and it's going to be a home and habitat for tons of species that have never been here before. Like just at our bird feeder, we've had birds here that we have not seen, that we did not see when we were here last year. We've had um, blue jays, of course, a rose-breasted grosbeaks. Um, we've had some grackles, uh, all sorts of different birds. Some that I haven't been able to identify yet. I'm working on it though. The amount of flowers that we're gonna have out here for the different pollinators, uh, how we're changing the soil biology from a fungal to a bacterial in the garden area is going to be really beneficial for thousands of different insects and there's still going to be a lot of habitat for the frogs and the salamanders and the snakes you can't walk through here any day without seeing at least two or three snakes so it's going to be a nice rich environment for for the, the inhabitants and the creatures and stuff that live around here and want to call it home and we're excited to share it with you so Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> so we took a trip to Cornhill Nursery. They had called us to say our trees were ready to be picked up. This was about an hour drive for us. Very pretty. They've got it very well landscaped. They've got waterfalls and a little cafe that we had lunch at. We were able to pick up some extra blueberry bushes and half scaps and some other things that weren't on our order. <laughs> really working all the, all the plants. All right. Another haul of uh, berries. Perennial berries, blueberries, rhododendron, gooseberry, and then our order of peaches and pears and apples. Gentle. <laughs> oh, blood scratching here. Blood scratch. Oh, you're going to knock me over, dude. <laughs> the goose was like, back off. <laughs> And our final strategy was to plant bare roots in native soil. When we were ordering our trees, we preferred to order bare root tree stock as we could put it directly into the native soil and reduce the amount of root shock that the tree would experience as it's adapting to its new home. You no, know, it's just, uh, it's a good size to start with though. Yeah. It's a dragonfly. <laughs> It's I'm a... not entirely sure it's working. Yeah, I don't think it's working. I don't think it's working. After clearing the forest and breaking into our new soil, we we're pleasantly surprised at the loneliness of the first couple of inches. Years of debris of leaves and branches breaking down, feeding the soil made it nice and rich. And we found a lot of beneficial earthworms just everywhere in the soil.
While the stumps that were left behind were a bit of a nuisance now, as they degrade and decay, their nutrients will go back into the soil, feeding our orchard. enough. I already have all this leaf, leaf mulch. May as well use it. Yeah. I honestly just still feel like this is a dream. Our little orchard has been put in. All the trees have been planted. Like, <laughs> I just don't even know where we found the time. There's a lot of nights we're out here at like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Still planting and still like clearing trees. Or Papa, I don't know. It's like not even, it's not doing much. These are all bare root trees. Got sea buckthorn. Once we get a wood chipper, we're gonna put wood chip mulch all through here. Oh, here we go. Siberian peach. Definitely got a bit of growth on there. Those are supposed to be hardy for our cold climate. Autumn olive growth doing good. Oh, looks like something tried to dig. Let's dig this up. We do have lots of squirrels in the area and rabbits and deer. So eventually our plan is to get a bit of a fence Lingdonberry, another Siberian peach. This cranberry is doing awesome. It's one of my most fond memories in the orchard with my grandpa back on the farm. Really excited to have my own orchard. <laughs> I think he would be proud. Arctic plum. These ones we just planted, so they will take a little bit to still get going. The papa. This is Siberian peach. Oh, what's this one? Oh, go uh, goji berry? Yep, goji berry. A red Bartlett pear. Reliance peach. I've been wanting to grow peaches for years and never could. In Alberta, where we lived before, our growing zone was a 3B and peaches will not grow there. And now in South East New Brunswick, we're in a growing zone like 6A, as we can. Another pecan. What do we got? We have another goji berry. Ooh, sweet 16 apple. It's a dessert apple, and it's supposed to taste like really sweet, almost like candy, like cherries. A hint of cherry and vanilla, I think is what it says. Ooh, our semi-dwarf apricot. It's already putting out so much growth. And then this one, oh, Reliance Peach. All the buds for the new growth. Oh, I'm so happy gonna be my prized possession there. Yeah, oh look how really that's so awesome. Yeah. These are the bare root pussy willows I planted. And they are gonna be for decoration and cut flowers like bouquets. So here, as promised, I've got our actual receipts of what we spent on starting this orchard. Some of these include like willow trees and some decorative plants that aren't really technically orchard, but we're still including them here in that total cost. So 
a lot of berry bushes, a lot of fruit trees. We added in our compost. It's not a perfect um, exact number, but it's a pretty close estimation for how much we spent on starting this orchard. While it is a fair amount of money, we just consider it to be an investment on our food sovereignty, our food security for the next 20 plus years, because hopefully all these fruit trees will grow and give us back that return on investment that we're putting in year one. We could have stretched it out over a couple of years, but fruit trees take a long time to grow. And we just thought, let's put it all in year one. If you've made it this far in the video, we just want to say thank you. We have a lot of fun putting these videos together, and we hope that you find some value in it. Thanks for coming along with us on this adventure as we build this farm from scratch. We hope to see you next time on the next episode of Raven Willow Farmstead.